Bitcoin burning is a term that you will hear often in the crypto world. In May 2021, Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, burned 410 trillion Shiba Inu tokens, which were worth approximately 9.29 billion US dollars at that time. Burning these coins basically means destroying them or getting rid of them forever. In this video, you will learn what is coin burning and how exactly coin burning is done. Where do these coins come from? Why companies and developers burn these coins? And finally, some examples of crypto burning cases. We have included timestamps so you can easily skip to any part you want. With that said, let's get started. Coin burning is basically destroying an amount of crypto, removing it from the supply forever. This burning is permanent and irreversible, meaning that you cannot undo it in the future. It is like burning cash. Once it is done, it is gone forever. After the burn, the supply of this crypto decreases, which in theory should make this crypto more valuable. According to the basic supply and demand rule, lowering the supply or quantity of any coin should theoretically raise its price, as long as the demand for this coin stays the same or increases, just like any product in the world. Scarce products or goods with low supply have high prices, such as gold and oil. As we have just said, the price should theoretically increase. However, in the real markets, prices are impacted by a lot of other factors, not just supply. Back to coin burning, you should know that any cryptocurrency can be burned and anyone can burn his crypto. But you shouldn't do that by any means, as you will be throwing your money away. Most of the times, coin burning is done by companies and development teams. In Vitalik Buterin's case we talked about earlier, he burned the Shiba tokens because he didn't want to hold that much power in the Shiba Inu project, as they had sent him 50% of Shiba total supply without his approval as a marketing move. So he burned 90% of his tokens, and donated the remaining 10% to a charity fighting COVID-19 in India. So, how is coin burning is done? A coin burn is done by sending the coins to an address with no private key. This address is called burn address or eater address. You can see some popular burn addresses and the balances they hold right now. Before explaining how exactly a burn process is done, you need to know from where these coins come from. You may be wondering, Will these burnt coins include coins stored in your wallet? Well, the answer is absolutely not. The burnt coins come from totally different sources. First, the coins can come from the unsold coins after an ICO. An ICO is a funds raising method for new crypto projects, where investors invest their money buying a new coin or token. After an ICO, many crypto projects burn the unsold coins. This is done to reward the early investors and try to raise the price of the coin. Another source we can burn its coins is the treasure or reserve of the company. Many crypto projects hold a considerable percentage of all coins of their project. These coins can be used in the burn process if the team wants to do it. However, most of the coin burns are done by buying the coins from the sellers on the market and then burning them. Or it can be done using transaction fees accumulated from transactions done on the blockchain. Now, we get a bit technical to explain how coins are burned on the backend. A coin burn is done by the burn function implemented in an Ethereum smart contract. If you don't know what a smart contract is, it is basically a code on the blockchain that executes transactions and processes automatically when certain conditions are met, without any authority or intermediaries. We will explain smart contracts and how they work in details in an upcoming video. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. When someone wants to burn some coins, he states how much of a crypto to burn. Then, the smart contract first checks the number of coins he has in his wallet. If he doesn't have enough coins, the function doesn't get executed. If he has enough coins in his wallet, then the function works and sends the coins from his wallet to the burn address. These coins will then be removed from the total supply of the cryptocurrency. You now know what is a coin burn and how it is done. 
But why do developers and companies decide to burn these coins? The most obvious reason is to attempt to boost the price of the coin by decreasing its supply. But as we said earlier, for this to work, the demand of the coins needs to remain constant or increase. If the demand of the coin decreases, the burn will not have any effect on the price. Another reason for burning coins is their use in a consensus mechanism to verify transactions on the blockchain. Without the need for the massive power and energy requirements of other consensus mechanisms, like the proof of work, the usage of burned coins to verify transactions is called the proof of burn mechanism. In this system, the miners have to burn their coins to be able to verify transactions and earn mining rewards. Another application of coins burning is their use in spam protections mechanisms. In XRP, for example, a fee is paid for each transaction done on the network. This fee is not paid to Ripple or to anyone. This fee is burned, decreasing supply of XRP with each transaction and protecting the network from attacks. As this transaction fees increases, with increasing the load on the network. Any cryptocurrency can be burned, and a lot of cryptos are burned daily. However, here we will talk about the most popular cases of coin burns. The BNB coin, developed by Binance Exchange, is one of the most obvious cases. Binance burns BNB coins every three months, and they aim to burn 50% of the total supply, which equals to 100 million BNB coins. This is done as a way to give it back to its coin holders. XRP is another popular example, where they burn transaction fees accumulated in XRP to mainly protect the network and to support the currency in the long-term rewarding coin holders. Decentraland team also burns mana, which is the currency for Decentraland's virtual world. On any virtual real estate, clothes, or customizations sold on their marketplace, a 2.5% fee in mana is burned and this is also done to decrease the supply and increase the price of the MANA token. At the end of this video, we hope that you learned what you need to know about coin burning and how it is done. And if you liked our video, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.